After watching this video lecture series, students will be able to write equilibrium expressions for heterogeneous reactions, as well as utilize ice tables to solve equilibrium problems. So in homogeneous equilibrium, all the reactants and products are going to be in um, the same phase. So they'll all be gases, or they'll all be you know, dissolved in a liquid, or dissolved in a solution um, in, in the aqueous state. In heterogeneous equi equilibrium, we're dealing with multiple phases for your reactants and products. So you'll have some gaseous reactants or products and, say, a solid, or a pure liquid um, and some gaseous reactants or products. Now, what you need to understand is that with respect to your equilibria, excuse me, equilibrium, uh, your position of your equilibrium does not depend on the amounts of either pure um, solids or pure liquids that are present in the equation. Okay, so if we look at this equation down here, um, notice we have uh, two products that are in the aqueous phase, um, and we have obviously a solid reactant. So when we go to write our equilibrium expression for this heterogeneous equilibrium, um, we are going to exclude the solid. Okay, so in this case, P PBCL. 2 is excluded, and we just report our equilibrium expression with respect to the two components that are not a pure solid. Okay, so hetero and homogeneous um, equilibrium. Obviously, if we have a heterogeneous uh, equilibrium setup, we're going to have either solid, pure solid, or pure liquid present in the equation. We have another example here, calcium carbonate decomposing into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas. Notice that I have two solids, okay, one a reactant and one a product, um, and I subsequently have um, my gaseous CO2 product. So in this case, the only component that's going to be included in my equilibrium expression is the CO2. Now please understand, even though we exclude the solids um, and liquids from the equilibrium expression, it does not mean that their present do presence doesn't matter. The reality of it is, is that these reactants or these products have to be present in order for equilibrium to occur. Um, it's just that their concentrations don't change, and because we're looking at equilibrium with respect to thermodynamic quantities and those activities, um, we subsequently exclude the things that are not in the same phase as um, either the gaseous or um, liquid setups. So um, the equilibrium expression, although it may exclude things that are part of the chemical reaction, please understand that we're not saying that they don't need to be present. Of course they have to be. So let's go ahead and look at calculating equilibrium problems. Okay, so there's a handful of steps that are required in order to um, basically be able to do these types of calculations. The first thing is we need to have a balanced equation. Okay, so either you're going to be writing it or to be provided. Um, the next thing you'll do is write an equilibrium expression. Okay, and of course we need to be differentiating between the hetero um, and homogeneous um, uh, equilibrium expression procedures. So make sure that you're, you know, excluding solids if you have a heterogeneous um, setup. You're going to then make something called an ice table, okay? And ice in the I in the ice table stands for initial, okay? C stands for change, okay? And E stands for equilibrium, okay? And if you can remember that, you'll know what it is that you're going to be plugging into each space. Okay, um, after we make our ice table, we plug in our appropriate concentrations, depending on what we've been given. Um, and then we plug in the E concentrations and subsequently solve for K. Okay, so we've been told that we have a closed system. Okay, so that's obviously one of the necessities for um, establishing equilibrium. Um, and it initially contains 1.0 times 10 to the negative third molar H2. Okay, and 2.0 times 10 to the negative three molar I2 at 448 degrees C. It's allowed to reach equilibrium. Okay, now analysis of the equilibrium mixture tells us that we have a concentration of HI that corresponds to the 1.87 times 10 to the negative third molar concentration seen here. Now they want us to calculate Kc, okay, so with the equilibrium constant at 448 degrees C for the reaction 
seen here. Okay, so we have our equation. All right, it's balanced. The next thing that we need to look at is um, setting up our appropriate equilibrium expression. So notice this is a homogeneous uh, setup. So our equilibrium expression in this case is going to be HI squared over H2 and I2, both to the first power. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're going to then set up an ice table so that we can figure out the concentration values for HI, um, H2, and I2 at equilibrium. So we're going to go ahead and set up an ice table. Uh, basically what we do is we write um, our initial, um, our change, and our equilibrium um, data in basically this ta tabulated form. We have our reactants okay, and our products. What we then do is we read our questions and we analyze what we've been provided. Okay, So they told us that initially we had this concentration um, in molarity of H2, this concentration of I2, um, and since there was no mention of HI um, being present, we make the assumption that initially there is none present okay, on our product side. So basically, this is our initial setup. Now, they also told us that they analyzed um, the solution or the, or the container at equilibrium. And they told us that the concentration of HI present at equilibrium was 1.87 times 10 to the negative third. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this value into the equilibrium uh, area uh, for HI on the ice table. So we need the remaining uh, concentration values at equilibrium in order to plug into our equilibrium expression um, and to obtain our equilibrium constant. So in order to uh, get our equilibrium condition, we need to figure out the change associated with our reactants and products. Okay, And we're going to take advantage of our knowledge of what's physically happening in the equation, or in the reaction rather, um, and the stoichiometry. So we know that H2 and I2 are being used to produce HI. Okay, And so we know that H2 and I2's concentrations are going to be decreasing while the concentration of HI is increasing. Okay, So in this context, we know that our uh, change for our HI, or excuse me, for our H2 and our I2 are going to be negative. Their values are going to be decreasing. In that same thought process, the quantity or the concentration of my HI is going to be increasing, so it's going to have a positive value. All right, now if we use X to represent that concentration, H2 and I2 um, are both going to just have a single X value representing those concentrations. Why? Because stoichiometrically there's a coefficient of 1 in front of each. Now in the case of HI, it's going to be increasing by 2 times x because the stoichiometry dictates that it must. So now our next objective needs to be to figure out what x actually corresponds to. Okay, and depending on the data that's provided, that's going to be what allows you to figure out what x actually is. In this context, x okay, um, is going to be figured out by utilizing the information we have about the equilibrium concentration of Hi. Okay, so um, basically, for HI, we go from having a concentration um, equal to 0 to a concentration of 1.87 times 10 to the negative third at equilibrium. Okay, So in this case, the change associated with um, HI is actually going to be 1.87 times 10 to the negative third molar. Okay? Um, so we have been provided the change value associated with X. Now, if 1.87 times 10 to the negative third is equal to 2x, okay, as we have um, seen here, what we're going to do then is we are going to solve for our x. So if we're going to go ahead and solve for x, we're going to divide our 1.87 times 10 to the negative third by 2 to get our x value by itself. And that's going to give us x being equal to 9.35 times 10 to the negative third. Um, fourth, right? So in the case of H2 and I2, the change in X is going to be negative 9.35 times 10 to the negative fourth, um, respectively. So now that we know our change values, we can subsequently calculate 
our concentration of H2 and I2 at equilibrium. So for each of these, what we're going to be doing basically um, is combining uh, the initial concentrations with the change. So in this context uh, of H2 and I2, um, we're going to be subtracting out the 9.35 from our original concentrations. And obviously, similarly, we're going to be adding the change in concentration to the original concentration of HI. Why? Because obviously it's increasing. So if we go ahead and do that, we get the following values. Now these values can now be used to plug in to our concentration uh, values in our equilibrium expression to subsequently solve for Kc. So we go ahead and we plug those values into our equilibrium expression, we perform the mathematical calculation, and we end up with the following equilibrium constant. So now that we followed our steps, I just want to mention one thing. Uh, we could have uh, done this problem with respect to partial pressures. Um, we would have followed all of the same protocols, all of the same steps. The only difference is that instead of plugging in concentrations into our equilibrium expression and solving for Kc, we would be solving or plugging in partial pressure values and solving for Kp.